here with the future of boxing, Kermel Moulton. What's good with you, Kermel? What's good? What's I'm chilling, man. All right, you finally over on the East Coast. Glad to have you. October 12th, you return to the ring. How you feeling? I feel great. You know, I feel strong. I feel I'm in shape. I feel ready. Had a great camp. And um, you know, I'm excited to perform for the East Coast fans, you know. I want to uh, see how, how they see how they feel. You know, I, I know they're real passionate about boxing over here in Philly, so I'm excited to put on a show for them. All right, you're 5-0, four knockouts. Uh, how are you feeling about your progression as a professional so far? I feel like I've been uh, progressing great, you know. I've been having a lot of great matchmaking, you know. I've been fighting on great cards, you know. Now I'm on a great card with Danny Garcia on uh, some promotions. So um, you know, I feel like I'm going great so far. I've been real busy this year. This will be my fifth fight this year, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Yo, speaking of matchmaking, right, it's not – I'm going to say it's not normal for 18 year old to have your level of opposition. Like, what, um, is that you or is that your uh, your team, Floyd, and them believing in you? I feel like it's true that, that most um, 18 year olds, you know, coming up, they wouldn't have the type of opposition that I, I was fighting, especially in my first three, four fights. But, um, you know, my team do believe in me. It's like Floyd was trying to have me my debut fight a world champion. So, you know, I know he believes in me a lot, you know. I got a great matchmaker. You know, we picking all the right fights. Uh, you know, they believe in me. I, I'm a, and I'm able to fight these guys because I'm on a certain level. That, uh, and I got so much experience. You know, I've been doing this for over 14 years. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already a veteran in this game. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready for them guys. Do you feel like your amateur pedigree has given you an advantage in, in the early stages of your career? Yeah, definitely. I feel like any uh, professional fighter with a, a big amateur pedigree will have a lot more success in the pros. October 12th, Philly's never really seen you up close. What can everybody expect? Expect an amazing performance. You know, I'm going to go out there, use my skills, and uh, we get the knockout. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, four out of, you knocked out four out of your uh, five opponents, right? I think Anthony Cuba was the only yeah, one that yeah. survived. What did you learn in that fight? Um, well, I learned that not everybody's not just going to go out, you know, when you hit them. Uh, and then I just learned that I got to pace myself, you know, uh, stay sharp. You know, he caught me like twice with some shots. I was going for the kill. It didn't really hurt me or nothing, but yeah, I shouldn't have got caught with the, the, the wild shot he threw. So um, I just learned to keep it tight, you know, stay sharp on my defense all times. And that fight gave me a lot of good experience in the pro. So. I feel more confident after that. What's the biggest difference between the professionals and the amateurs? Uh, definitely the rounds, of course, and no head gears, obviously. You know, them punches is coming quicker. It's eight ounces. So, you, know, you, you love them eights? Yeah, I like <laughs> the eights. But, uh, yeah, you know, just work on placing your shots. You know, uh, really, you don't got to throw all them big combinations. All really taking the pros in one. So... But I feel like I always, I always had a pro style throughout the amateurs, so for me, I, I just keep being me. As far as, like, your inspiration, which fighters do you look at? Which fighters do you take stuff from? Like, yo, I like this, I'm going to do that, or, or, you know, or did you watch growing all up? The, all, the, all the legendary fighters, really. I take a little bit from everyone. But, uh, Floyd, Floyd, of course, was definitely one of the main fighters I watched and try to base my style off of. A lot of like Pretty Boy Floyd, and um, also, I watch a lot of Aaron Pryor, uh, Cornell Whitaker, you know, I, uh, all them, all them guys. All right, so you know I gotta ask you, right? But because of the way you look, because of the way you fight, everybody looks at you as the next Javante Davis, right? right? right. Future of boxing, like not too many guys have come out the amateurs with the level of hype that you've had. What kind of pressure is that? Uh, there's no pressure really. I mean, I, I'm used to it, you know. Uh, I've been having pressure on me since I was young, so I'm really used to it now. And I, I just believe in myself, so it ain't really no pressure. What's the most underrated part of Kermel Moulton's game? Uh, my boxing ability. A lot of people haven't uh, been able to see it in the pros yet. People from the amateurs know that I, I, I really like to fight off the back foot a lot, but... Um, in the pros, I, sometimes I be hitting these guys and they be moving, so I be having to pressure them and stuff, but definitely my boxing. Bro, you say the back foot. Like, I've seen you spar 68-pounders, and you all that's, front footwork. That's work. after I hit them, though. <laughs> if, if 
what one time there'll be a time when I I'm gonna have a probably like a come forward Mexican fighter or something. Y'all gonna see my boxing. How good is Kermel? Um, good as I want to be. You know, I I just you know work hard. You know, uh, work in the gym. And, uh, I really ain't got no limits on myself. You know. Ain't no ceiling at the top, none of that. Sky's the limit. Uh, ain't no limits for me, you know, show for the stars. Complete fighter? Absolutely. All right. Uh, last question, I'm going to ask you a boxing question. Coming up, Arthur Betterbeef, Dimitri Bivol. How you feeling about that? That's a tough fight. I really don't know. Um, before the injury, I had Arthur winning. Mm. But I feel like maybe now, Bivol, Arthur ain't going to be able to move his feet as good to, you know, catch up to Bivol. People might just box him for 12 rounds. But um, I spoke to some of Archer's old farm partners that did like thousands of rounds with him, and they said he's he's something different. Yo, said, every sparring partner I talk to. <laughs> they said he's something crazy. And so I really don't know. But I think right now I'm leaning towards Archer a little bit. I like Bivol, though. But if I had to bet, I'm going to put money on Archer. What does Bivol have to do to make this competitive? Um, it's definitely going to be competitive. Well, I'm sorry. What does b had have to do to get the W? Let me say that. <laughs> uh, just be himself, really, but, you know, stay sharp. Don't let uh, Archer catch him. You know, keep boxing him. I feel like he's going to he gonna have to catch Archer with something, though, to make him respect him. Mm. So he don't go, come too crazy. So, might have to sit down on a few of his shots. Perfect.